Good afternoon and welcome back to our radiology tutorials. Today we're going to cover cervical oblique projections. Now cervical oblique projections are taken to see the intervertebral foramen or the IVFs. In the cervical spine the IVFs are oriented at a 15 degree anterior and 45 degree inferior orientation relative to the coronal plane. So when cervical obliques are taken, we have to account for those two entities. And the way we do that is first by positioning the patient at a 45 degree angle to the bucky. This will allow for adequate visualization through the vertebral or the intervertebral foramen when combined with a tube tilt. Now oblique projections can be taken in the A to P or P to A orientation. This will alter which direction your tube will be tilted, cephalad versus caudad. But anterior and posterior obliques will end up coming out or developed looking the same. And so when you're in practice, you have to position the patient to the best of your ability, whether that's an anterior or posterior position. And remember to take both sides left and right, either anterior or posterior uh, as a couple. Now oblique projections are named for the portion of the body that is touching the bucky. So for example, if we take a left anterior oblique radiograph of the cervical spine, that implies that the left side of the patient as well as the anterior portion of the left side of the patient was positioned up against the bucky. This will become important in testing situations or in written examinations when asked questions like an LPO projection of the cervical spine was obtained and which IVFs are you viewing. In general, anterior obliques show you the same side IVFs, meaning that if you take a right anterior oblique, for example, you'll be visualizing the right IVFs. The opposite is true for the left IVFs and anterior obliques. When we're taking posterior obliques of the cervical spine, you will visualize the opposite or contralateral intervertebral foramen. For example, if a left posterior oblique uh, radiograph is obtained, the right IVS will be visualized. So this is more of, of question asking and answering type situations. When you're looking at cervical spine oblique projections and the clinician did not use a marker specifying whether it was an anterior oblique or a posterior oblique, we can simply deduct which side of the patient is the correct side. If you pay close attention to our radiograph in the uh, right hand margin, uh, your right hand side, you'll notice that there's a left, a left marker on the radiograph. This implies that this is the left side of the patient, also implying that the area on the opposite side of the spine is the right side of the patient. So we don't always know how the patient was positioned prior to viewing the radiograph. Now there's a quick trick of the trade that you can use that will allow you to adequately identify which side structures you are viewing is to draw a line dividing the posterior aspect or the mid to posterior aspect of the vertebral body. The visualization of this line will allow you to separate right from left sided structures. So as you can see very well, this is the left side of the patient while this is the right side of the patient. This will help us tremendously. For example, here are the intervertebral foramen, these nice lucent holes that you are visualizing along the posterior most aspect of the spine. Notice that these intervertebral foramen are located on the left side of the patient as indicated by the radiographic marker here. Therefore, these are left sided IVFs. If we remember that anterior obliques show us the same side IVFs, in the cervical spine, at least, because when we get to the lumbar spine, this is not true. Posterior obliques, cervical spine, uh oh, please excuse me, show you the opposite side or the contralateral side. IVFs. So if we had to guess which views or which position, patient position, could have been used to result in this radiograph, well if an anterior oblique was taken it would have to have been in left anterior oblique because we know that anterior oblique so is the same side IVFs. We are visualizing the left side therefore left anterior oblique is a viable option. If in fact a posterior oblique was taken, a right posterior oblique would result in visualization of left side IVFs also. Therefore, for this particular radiograph, this patient was positioned in either a left anterior oblique position 
or a right posterior oblique position. This is the most that we can deduce simply from visualizing the radiograph. Some clinicians use markers that specify LAO or RPO, for example, which makes it a little more useful. But the most important thing clinically is just to realize which side IVFs are being visualized. I'm just going to clean up our screen a little bit here. Okay, so these are the IVFs. Now I want to draw your attention to the margins of the IVFs. Notice that the roof of any particular IVF IVF is this little linear structure here. This is the pedicle. More specifically, this is the left pedicle. Notice that the floor of any particular IVF is the pedicle also. So now we have two margins of the intervertebral foramen. Let's come up to the segment above. Let's draw our attention to the anterior margin of the intervertebral foramen. Notice that this anterior margin is comprised of posterior vertebral body, intervertebral disc, and uncle vertebral joint anteriorly. If we look more posterior, you'll notice this very nice lucency here at multiple levels. This is actually the facet joint with the interverte excuse me, intervening articular pillars. This structure comprises the posterior aspect of the IVF or the intervertebral foramen. So when we think about the borders and what could potentially cause intervertebral foraminal stenosis or narrowing, we have to consider uncovertebral joint arthrosis, intervertebral disc herniations, as well as facet joint arthrosis. All right. So, we've identified the intervertebral foramen, we've identified the pedicles, the left pedicles at least, the left articular pillars, and left facet joints. Now, the left side of the posterior arch is viewed very well, and if I just draw you a little schematic here, this patient is in an oblique position, here's the body, here's the pedicles, articular pillar, lamina, spinous process. So when we take an oblique projection, let's just say that the x-ray beam is coming from this direction. This particular pedicle we're going to see on profile, meaning we're going to see the length of the pedicle. And that's what's happening here. The pedicles that we're visualizing are essentially at a 90 degree angle to the direction of the beam and so we see them on profile. The other pedicle however we will be looking down the length of and in this case we're looking down the length of the right pedicles which is why the right pedicles look circular and the left pedicles look linear. And so once we understand the position of the vertebral body or the position of the patient and how it allows us to visualize different structures and different orientations. And so notice that these pedicles are in fact to the right of the line we drew. Now, one thing that we must consider is that we do see the posterior arch very well, but we only see one side of the posterior arch very well as we're seeing here. Now, our anatomical division is 90% true, meaning that everything to the right of this line is right-sided and everything to the left of this line is left-sided. The only structure in which this rule does not work is the lamina. The contralateral lamina is going to be visualized on the same side as the IVFs. And so in this particular case, we're going to see right-sided lamina on the left side of the patient and they're going to overlie the pedicle region. So in fact, there's a faint little line you see here and the right lamina is actually superimposed over the left pedicle. Now in no testing situation will an instructor that I know of anyway uh, ask you to differentiate these structures. It's not seen very well. The other lamina we are looking down the length of and so you get this very rounded appearance, in this case to the left lamina, superimposed over the articular pillar. This can be a little difficult to start, so don't be confused. Just remember that when you make this division, left and right are respected with the exception of the lamina, in which case both lamina will be visualized on the same side as the IVFs you see. Just to finish up with some anatomy here, these are the intervertebral disc spaces. And this patient is demonstrating a little bit of narrowing at this particular level with some osteophyte formation, simply a sign of degeneration. Here we see the hyoid bone. There's some thyroid cartilage calcification present in this patient as well as the air column here in the trachea, as well as the larynx and pharynx. 
the skull portion of the skull is also well visualized on oblique projections as well as some portions of the mastoid air cells now what can be difficult is identifying what particular level one may be visualizing so here's the posterior arch of c1 which means that this is the level of c1 this would be c2 c3 and so on i hope this tutorial was helpful for you and please join us for future tutorials